Today, my goal is very simple. My goal is to challenge you, the viewer, right off the bat, to have an open mind. I know in the world of specialty AV, specifically hi-fi and home theater, the word soundbar often, well, it triggers a pretty strong reaction. <laughs> But let's do away with the stale tropes about sound bars and look at them through the lens of what you actually hear and feel in a cinema versus what you think a surround sound system is supposed to look like. I guess this is kind of my polite way of saying trigger warning because we are talking about sound bars again and not just any sound bar, but Samsung's new Q950A sound bar system. So subscribe, hit that like button and let's get real. <laughs> Now for the five of you still watching, I don't wanna take up too much time discussing the Q950A's specs because I'm on a mission today, a mission to broaden your horizon. So here's what you need to know. The Q950A is an 11.1.4 Dolby Atmos and DTSX system. This is Samsung's flagship bar, it replaces the Q950T we reviewed back in December. The Q950A adds two extra channels over the 950T, making it the first 11.1.4 soundbar from Samsung. It features largely the same input and output connection options, which includes HDMI with EARC. It has built-in smart features like Alexa, Wi-Fi, AirPlay 2, and Bluetooth connectivity, as well as control via the Samsung SmartThings app, which I'll get to in a minute. It has support for Samsung's own Q Symphony, as well as a brand new feature for 2021, SpaceFit Sound Plus, which is an auto room calibration procedure not found on the older 950T. In terms of design, the Q950A soundbar looks identical to the 950T, and it is the same story for the subwoofer as well. The surrounds are a little different, though unless you look really closely, I doubt many would notice. I know I didn't. In fact, the Q950A as a system is so similar to the outgoing 950T looks-wise, I actually thought Samsung sent us the wrong unit. Thankfully, they didn't, but if you were hoping for a new year, new me sort of situation with respect to the Samsung's look, eh... Not so much. Setting up the new 950A isn't that different from the previous generation, or frankly, any sound bar for that matter. Place the main bar in front of your TV, preferably below. Put the wireless subwoofer where it sounds best in your room, and the wireless surrounds slightly behind, but angled in towards your primary listening position. From there, you have two choices. You can plug and play using the Samsung remote, or fire up the SmartThings app and dial in the system further. I recommend doing the latter. The Samsung SmartThings app isn't new, but it also isn't exclusive to home theater either. Instead, it's an app for all of your Samsung devices, from televisions to microwaves to refrigerators. Connecting the Q950A to the app is pretty seamless. Now, I have an iPhone and the communication between the Samsung and my Apple device is among the best I have encountered. I have to imagine those of you that are rocking Samsung phones will likely have an even better experience. Missing from the app, however, is the soundbar's individual driver levels. To adjust the volume of, say, the center drivers, you need to use the remote, which is fine, it works, but it's odd that those controls are not in the app where everything else resides. Now, the biggest addition to the app is Samsung's new room calibration procedure they're calling SpaceFit Sound Plus, which causes the system to emit a white noise for about two minutes while it gathers information about your room's acoustic properties, not really unlike other software from, say, Odyssey. What makes SpaceFit Sound Plus different is that you don't have to use a microphone and place it in numerous places around your room. Instead, the system listens to itself, thanks to calibration microphones that are built into the speakers and subwoofer. This is very cool and no doubt the future of where Auto Room EQ is headed as it's just easier. You can toggle Room EQ on and off within the app to hear the before and after. In our room, I wouldn't say that the after was dramatically different from before, but there was a difference and a positive one. So I went ahead and left it on. Now earlier I said I was going to challenge you to have an open mind and here's where I'm going to need it. I don't want you to think about a traditional home theater. I want you to think about a theater, a real movie theater. How many speakers do you see up front? How many subwoofers? If you're being honest with yourself, the answer to that question is none because they're all located behind a screen. So it could be one or it could be 10. You don't really know, but you probably don't spend a lot of time thinking about it either. Now surrounds, I get it. Those are a little bit different, those you see. But how many of you are really losing sleep over the number of surrounds in either a movie or home theater? 
My guess is not many of you. Now, what does this have to do with anything? I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that we've probably reached an era with soundbars or soundbar based systems in that if you didn't see one in front of you, the soundbar that is, you likely wouldn't question its sound. Okay, kill him. And I'm gonna go one step further and say that if you couldn't see it, you may even like it. That is, if you can stop thinking about soundbars of the past and keep an open mind. Case in point, the Samsung Q950A. This system is so good, so convincing, that I could honestly live with it as my dedicated home theater setup with zero shame. It's not that the Samsung is somehow miraculously better than, say, a complete Focal Dolby Atmos home theater setup, but it's comparable in its ability to convey the grandness of the movie-going experience, and that, that, is the true job of a home theater. Think about it. A movie theater's sound is large and broad. It has explosive dynamics and gut-punching bass, and it relies very heavily on surround channels to make you feel encompassed by the action unfolding on screen. That sound, coupled with a truly large screen, makes for a transformative experience. And these are all traits the Q950A system has and is capable of, straight up. Take the bass for example. When viewing bass heavy sequences from the film Tenet or Deepwater Horizon, the Samsung sub not only hit the low notes, it did so with real authority. More impressively, it did so without distortion. So in the oil rig explosion scene of Deepwater Horizon, I heard and felt the impact with zero resonances to distract me from what I was seeing on our 85 inch Vizio. I have had so-called better subs with better built cabinets, way more power, and likely better built drivers of the same relative size bottom out during these and other sequences, and yet the Samsung sub didn't. The soundbar's size doesn't constrain dialogue at all, and dialogue is intelligible at virtually all volumes, tenants questionable sound mixing notwithstanding. And spatially, the bar has arguably better on-screen placement than a dedicated or traditional center speaker, thanks to the Q950A's internal DSP. Now, in some instances, if you have the subset too high, you may hear deeper voices like mine through both the bar and the subwoofer. Dialing back the sub or the bass a click or two inside the app will usually remedy this, and when dialed in, the handoff between soundbar and sub is pretty seamless, resulting in a front stage that is positively huge despite the system's smaller size. Now in the past, I have felt that soundbars can have a tendency to be a bit bright or brittle sounding up top due to a lack of weight in the mid-range. This was one of the few caveats I had about our LG setup last year. The Q950T was among the few soundbars that started to show me that perhaps it was time to change my thinking as it was incredibly well balanced with the rest of the system's frequency response. And I could say the same of soundbars like the Sennheiser Ambio and maybe even the JBL Bar 9. With the Q950A, I feel like the highs have arrived and that they no longer need to be followed with a yeah but qualifier no they're they're just good now in terms of surround sound be it dolby digital atmos or some variation thereof the samsung positively sings admittedly i had to turn down the surround channels to taste as they were just a little too loud from the factory but once i found a balance that worked for me the transition from front to back and even overhead was wholly convincing and completely immersive it surpassed our reference soundbar, the Sennheiser Ambio, in terms of accuracy and placement within three-dimensional space. Just, just be sure not to mix up the surround speakers, as one is clearly marked right and the other one left. And when you put it all together with a healthy dose of processing, the impact of the Samsung Q950A system is beyond impressive. I've said it before, there is more R&D being put into making smaller, smart devices sound great and larger than there is making the same old tower speaker sound somehow different or better than the tower that came before it. I feel like soundbars get better every single year, whereas regular old home theater gear, eh. I mean, if your home theater is 10 years old, barring maybe a lack of Atmos support, you're not really missing out on anything. Whereas the difference between, say, a 10-year-old soundbar and the Q950A, night and freaking day. As far as television and movie watching is concerned, I have virtually no complaints with the Samsung Q950A, provided you have set it up correctly. Where the Q950A doesn't do it for me is with music. I don't like it. It's weird. And there isn't a sound preset that makes it better or that I can customize and fully make my own, which is disappointing. 
The best workaround that I found for music was disconnecting the surround speakers and placing the Q950A into its adaptive sound mode, which tries to approximate some measure of surroundness while not forcing all of the music in towards the center of the bar itself. For casual listening, this does the trick. But if you're looking for a sound bar with a more musical heart, the Q950A wouldn't be my absolute first choice. I think the Bang & Olufsen Bio Sound Stage and the Ambio are better when it comes to music. Another thing I loved about the Q950A but would like to see changed in the implementation is its dialogue enhancement. It's either on or it's off and a lot of bars behave like this, and for me, I'd like to have the option of something more right in the middle. When on, some of the dialogue could sound overly treble-focused, which I found distracting and not wholly natural. Off, and certain scenes or words may escape some viewers. I think if Samsung could issue a firmware update, whereby you had the ability to adjust the enhancement in, say, a increment of low, medium, and high, they could turn a nice feature into a great one. And lastly, there was a moment where the Q950A lost all communication with the Samsung SmartThings app, which forced me to have to, well, factory reset the whole system and essentially install it anew. This only happened one time. I'm not entirely sure what brought it on, but should it happen to you, it is annoying, but fixable. As for comparable soundbars, when it comes to movies, the Samsung is currently number one on my list, besting even our Ambio. The Ambio is still the better all-around performer, and it's great for both music and movies, not to mention it's a single bar solution and may work better for those of you who are tight on space. But like the Samsung, I understand its price may be cost prohibitive, so rather than tell you about all the bars that I don't think are as good, let's look at maybe some more approachable alternatives. The Q950T is still a great soundbar and a solid option in 2021, despite being a 2020 model. It recently came down in price, so in terms of value, it may have it over the Q950A. There's a lot of what makes the Q950A great to be found in the T, so if money is an obstacle, definitely check out the 950T. My budget soundbar of choice remains the Klipsch Cinema 600. If you don't need Atmos, but want a big, bold theater-like experience that is well-balanced like the Q950A, the Klipsch remains at the top of my list when shopping for a soundbar well under a grand. I know everyone is curious about my thoughts on the Cinema 800 and 1200, but those continue to be delayed here in the US. So like me, you're just gonna have to wait. But if you want a bar that can do double duty, both as a cinema speaker system as well as a music one, one of my favorites, apart from the Ambio, is still the Bang & Olufsen Bio Sounds Stage. The stage isn't cheap, nor is it as flexible as the Samsung system or just any system in general, but it is built better than any of them and has the hi-fi cred not only of its namesake, but more importantly in its sound quality, and I absolutely love it. But in the end, when it comes to a soundbar system that can go truly toe-to-toe -to -toe with a modest to maybe even mid-level home theater system, the Samsung Q950A is that soundbar. I make no excuses for it. It's, it's good. It has the power and the chops to place me in the center of the action and just keep my focus on what matters most, and that's the story. And it does so in a way few bars, and frankly, some dedicated home theaters do. So if you're in the market for a home theater system and you can leave your preconceived notions at the door and enter the buying process with a truly open mind, I would totally encourage you to take a look at the Q950A from Samsung because it's great. So that's it. That is my review of the Samsung Q950A Dolby Atmos and DTS-X soundbar system. But now it's time to hear what Christy thinks. <laughs> Because that's what you've all been waiting for. <laughs> Some people, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like uh, Lizzie Gordon says <laughs> on the sip. She's like, and now do you address my audience. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think? Come on. Um, I think it's really good. I mean, I know when we unboxed it and set it up and, you know, started playing it, we were, both looked at each other. And, you know, with raised eyebrows, we're like, you know, like, yeah, this is good. This yeah. sounds really good. Yeah. Um, I do, from my, you know, my recollection of the 950T, mm -hmm. I do think this is a pretty significant improvement in terms of sound. Like, yeah. I don't know what they did to it. And they're not really forthright with telling us either. But Yeah, big surprise. <laughs> but I, I agree with you. There is a notable difference. Yeah, it yeah. does. It does sound better. So I think if you are looking between the two unless you know saving saving the coin on the t 950t is mm -hmm. the you know a bigger 
bigger deal for you, yeah. I would get the, the, this newer version. Um, as far as, you know, the surround channels go, like, to be honest, I thought this bar sounded better without them. Um, and that could be partially from my listening position. Um, it, when we, when we were watching movies and stuff with this bar, I, I had a tendency to be sitting off access. And so the, the, the surround channel speaker was kind of right behind me. It was a lot closer. Yeah. And I thought it was at times distracting. Now mm-hmm. that could have been the mix of whatever we were watching. You know, yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to put too much, um, emphasis onto, you know, like it, I don't want to, I, I don't want to say like, oh, there's something wrong with the speaker or whatever. Cause no. I don't think that's it. No. I just, I, I think I learned something about myself <laughs> with this experience and is, and that is, to be honest, I don't really give a crap about surround, rear surrounds. Mm-hmm. Like I, they, I think they're kind of unnecessary. You're right. There isn't anything wrong with the surround speakers on this system. Like I said in the review, I think that they are way too loud from the factory. And so if you are turning them down by three, four, or even five clicks uh, in the app or on the remote, that's okay. That's okay because you shouldn't be aware of surround channels so much as when the sound travels around you, it just completes the journey, not become something that's like, it's coming, it's coming, and then boom, it's right there. It, it shouldn't do that. And so if there are plenty of, um, you know, plenty of scenes that have like a helicopter flying overhead, and if the helicopter flying overhead sounds like it's more behind you, even when you're seeing it in front of you, your surrounds are too high. You know what I mean? So that's a great way to be able to tell like, okay, let's tamp them down. And I think that once you do that, it is a pretty seamless experience. But I will admit, I think the majority of the time that maybe you're basing your experiences on, I hadn't fully finished tweaking uh, the surrounds yet. Because when I went back after the crash, after it disconnected from the app and I had to reinstall it. I really took some time and like dialed them in a little bit better. And I probably should have had you come back out. But yeah, maybe so. Cause I, I felt that they were too loud. Yeah. They're very and, noticeable. Um, and I also, I didn't really think that it was as a big of an issue when it was something like a sound traveling, like you mm-hmm. were talking about. Mm-hmm. But for example, when we were watching, outlander yeah like there was um there were a few scenes where they're all just standing around the characters are standing around having conversations um one was in a bar Mm -hmm. um and then another one they were just like they happened to be near a river or something (laughs) like moving water yeah and the sound of the moving water and the um background noise Mm -hmm. in the bar was distracting to me and I don't and if you're telling me that you hadn't adjusted the levels yet no. maybe that's it so you know forget what I just said no don't forget what you say because it's important that in a sound mix again tenant notwithstanding in a sound mix everything should feel balanced and non-directional unless there is something on the screen or I guess you could say the director's intent trying to cue you to a specific area with sound But for the most part, if it's just general mulling or room tone or ambient stuff like that, you, you shouldn't, you shouldn't feel like you can pinpoint some of it because that takes you out of the action, which it did for you. I'm trying, you were trying to listen to the character's dialogue and you're sitting here going, God, I wish the guy in table seven would shut the hell up. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. Like I don't need to know what you had for dinner last night, Frank. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So you're not, it's not a bad note. And I would just say that that note is, further validation that the levels just might be too high. I mean, Samsung sets everything to zero uh, from the factory and you can go plus or minus uh, any degree of of numbers, Um, but don't be afraid to go minus, you know. Okay, so about music. Mm -hmm. I thought the Samsung was actually really good with music. I I still think I mean, look, I, you're gonna have to cr- you're gonna have to pry that ambio out of my cold dead hands. <laughs> it's really good, it and is. 
do I believe that the Samsung Q950A is better than the Ambio? No, I don't. I think it's, I think it's as good. Mm -hmm. It's equal in certain respects, but for me, Mm -hmm. the Ambio is still the clear winner. Now, the problem here, and we've talked about this before, especially since the announcement that Sennheiser was selling off their home electronics the consumer market. Yeah. yeah their de- that division to, I don't know, some hearing aid company, mm-hmm. the future of that brand and especially the Ambio, I think is really unknown. And so if it were me yeah. and I didn't have the Ambio or if I didn't have anything and I'm just like, I'm on the market for a sound bar mm-hmm. and I've watched a ton of your reviews and I know you love the Ambio Am I going to go buy it? I'm not. And I would tell people, no, don't. Unless you're getting some killer deal. Yeah. Skip it because the likelihood is it's, it's probably not going to be supported for much longer, which is really unfortunate because it's such a great product. Yeah. I have to agree with you. I do. I have to agree with you. And that, that pains me to say, but. I really think that the consumer division of San, of Sennheiser, sorry, Sennheiser was purchased on the strength of their ear listening devices, not their one off soundbar. I can, and yeah, we could, you know, we could be wrong. I mean, it's always possible. I hope that we're wrong. It's always possible that they're going to do something with it. But what concerns me is that we've really had zero communication from Sennheiser to us personally about the future of their brand or especially the Ambia, which they know that we have and they know we love it. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that they've been kind of radio silent on the subject doesn't instill a ton of confidence in me, which would lead me to say, hey, if you're on the market for something like this, yeah, I think you should put this Samsung soundbar at the top of your list. Yeah, and I mean, we can't mince words here. The Samsung's... uh, a thousand or a little bit more than a thousand dollars less expensive and the ambio is a great all-in-one solution and like christy said if you're a, if some dealer's got one and he's like hey or he or she is like hey i'll make you a smoking deal on it i can't say that i wouldn't i would pass up an ambio for 12 1500 bucks you know i would probably take that leap to be honest with you because it is that good and so long as i don't worry about firmware updates in the future if the functionality of it today is good enough then yeah it's good enough but i'm going to say that the samsung setup is more flexible it does have better bass because it has a dedicated sub that that sub can go in your room where bass sounds best whereas the ambio has amazing bass it does, but the subs are inside the bar, and that may not always be the best place for everyone. So for $1,000 less money for a bar that approximates surround sound, if you don't want to connect the the rear speakers to it, it is Ambio-like, if not Ambio-better um, in many, many respects. Um, I would still, if someone was like, you have four sound bars in this house presently, you can only keep one. I'm keeping the Ambio. I know that I am. Um, but if that's not the case, or if you don't already own an Ambio, I'm like you 950A. It's a safer bet. In yeah, my I opinion. agree. And it's more cost effective. Yeah. You know, and it's I, not as expensive. And I would say, and this, this one hurts me more than Ambio. I know that you're partial to the Ambio, but I would say the Q950A over the BO sound stage, unless, unless you know that you're more of a 70 30 type listener, 70 music, 30 home theater, because at present the stage does not have the flexibility. It's great. It's great for movies. Don't get me wrong, but it needs the ability to have outboard sub or, or surrounds and things like that. But as a music listening device, it's, it's fantastic. So if you're a music first uh, enthusiast and home theater is second and you're looking for an all-in-one solution and the Ambio is too risky or too expensive, the stage is an option. But I'll agree with you, disconnect the surrounds from the Q950A and it is better with music with those disconnected. Yeah, 
I I definitely think that if you take out the surround channels, yeah, which seem to kind of always be on, they are. Um, I think that the music listening experience improves greatly. Mm-hmm. Um, I love the the bang. Ugh, God, I love the Bang and Olufsen mm-hmm. uh, stage. It's it like it's so sharp looking, mm-hmm. and you know, from a like decor standpoint, you know, give me a break. You can't touch it. And but it is really expensive. And I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that if somebody is more um if if music listening is more important to them they're probably not getting a sound bar you know yeah unless it's for you know unless it's for maybe a secondary space or i i don't know i mean i i, I never i just feel like i i know i know how audiophiles are and and their comment is gonna be like, yeah well am i if i'm into music i'm never looking at a sound bar True. And, and there was once upon a time where I was like, Hey, I'm into home theater and I'm never looking at a sound bar. Things can and do change. And as your needs change, as your space changes, as just things get better and more simple, it's okay. If you want to look at something that maybe 10 years ago, you would have never over your dead body even considered. Oh yeah. A hundred percent. And, and, and the thing is, is it's so much easier to live with. Yeah. You know, like, look, the having speakers and and integrated amplifiers and all of this stuff, it's it's great, and we are you know hashtag blessed up mm-hmm. in here. But do not try to pretend for two seconds that having something like the the Bay, the being Bay and Olufsen soundstage isn't going to give you as much joy mm-hmm. at. With way less complication. Sure, sure. And, and I'm sorry, as someone with very little time in my life <laughs> to enjoy stuff outside of work, yeah, that is something that quickly becomes a a priority. Yeah, get me to listening or watching faster, and I will give you my money. Hundred, hundred percent, hundred percent, because. I do. I have my days where I'm I'm in tweaker mode and I'm like, oh, I like to noodle this or let's massage this or let's find this amp with this speaker. I get it. I get it. There are days where I'm into that. And then there are days where I'm like, if I have to do one more thing, you know, just give me the amp, go get the Ambio. And, and I can't tell you how many times I've been in the middle of a review and by no fault of another products at all. It's just you caught me on a bad day. I've literally stopped what I'm doing and ripped out what I was starting to install and just boom, Ambio, play. Because I just wanted to watch the damn movie, yeah. you know? And and there's something to be said for that. And I think that whether you want to publicly admit it or not, I feel like some of you might be able to relate to that. And I hope that you'll chime in down below and let us know because this is a judgment-free place. But I also know that it's really scary to say that, yeah, I bought a sound bar from Costco a couple of years ago, and I got to admit, it's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I thought you made a really good, interest, a really interesting point with asking the audience about, you know, to really place themselves or remember the last time they were in a theater, which at this point could be, could have been, been could years. Be, could be a while. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, when you think about your time sitting in a theater, what is it your what do you really remember yep. you're not you're not you cannot count the number of speakers you have no idea i mean maybe you know because you just know mhm but i i think li- the likely the likelier answer is that you you probably don't have a clue what's behind the screen yeah. and if you can just give yourself over to you know allowing allowing yourself to be open to new things Mm -hmm. and stop worrying so much about if you're getting it right. Or if, if you buy this, is it going to make you less of like a real fan or whatever? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, just let all that go. Yeah. I think that people would be way more willing to admit that they're, that sound bars can actually be, really good and a really great solution for a lot of people yeah for a lot of people and i'm i'm gonna say that 
a lot of what drives the home theater uh, hobby or industry is the look, is, is the visual, except it's the wrong visual. The visual you should be focused on is what you're watching. And too often, it's the visual of what you're seated among, you know, like there's my big center, there's my eight subwoofers, there's my big towers and my height channels and then my effects channels. And I'm just, I'm basically living in a woofer. Um, and, and that, that is what matters. And it couldn't be further from the truth, really. Um, and home theater has gotten so kind of far away for better and for worse, mind you, has gotten so far away from, I think, the, the-, the theater or the theatrical ideal, um, for better and for worse, that I don't consider the two really related anymore. Um, because I think home theater in many ways serves itself. And I think that theater is theater or cin- cinema is cinema. Um, because if it really is about a big encompassing experience with sound to match, that's not hard to do. To sit there and say that home theater or to experience a cinema in one way is, or is only done one way and that is center, right, left, nine subwoofers, 12, 12 effects channels, blah, 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 blah. It, it, I mean, it, come on, come on. And in truth, more people are going to be able to have a home theater experience because of sound bars mm-hmm. than they will through any other system, especially with the number of people that are in smaller dwellings or renting where, I'm sorry, you just don't have the ability to do some of this stuff. The 950A and a lot of other bars like it make that possible. And that's why they're great. So that's it. That is now our review of the Samsung Q950A Dolby Atmos and DTS-X soundbar. What did you guys think? Let us know down in the comments below. And my question of the day for you is this. Have you changed your mind about soundbars? And if so, what finally did it for you? Be honest, please. Be honest with yourself, be honest with the class, because I really want to know. Because I, like many of you, were very, I was very anti-soundbar at one point, and now you know me, I love them. So let's get the dialogue going. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. Our video schedule may fluctuate a little bit throughout June, so turn on notifications so that you know when our next video drops. And speaking of subscribing, if you're not subscribed, you're gonna wanna do this. I know I mentioned this in the Rotel review, but we are approaching 200,000 subs, and Christy and I are going all out for that video, and that video involves you guys, subscribers specifically. So if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Make sure that your subscriptions are public so that we can see that you are subscribed because it is in your best interest. Um, If you use any of the links that Christy left for you down below, know that that is a great way that you have continued to show your support for this channel and the work that we do here. And we thank you all very much for doing that. Follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audiophile. And that is it. So remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you again for watching, and we will see you on the next video. Bye.